Um, I'm Chris. This is Kenneth. <laughs> I'm Jordan. Uh, yeah, we our client was Art Frog Academy. Uh, it's a co-founder and executive director is Heike Jost. Jost. Um, she is an art educator who's been involved in the Central Texas community for over 10 years. She's got a master's degree from um, Bauhaus University of Germany. Um, and she has a ton of passion. And it's amazing to see her uh, go through ideas and see how she wants to get into the community and really affect change in a positive way. So we really tried to create a platform for her to be able to do that. Um, and since we're coding students, our whole goal is to try to uh, graft that into a learning experience for us along the way. And uh, I think we've done it. Um, I, I'm, I'm very proud of the amount of work that we've put in. It's a functioning website. We've traversed from the client to the server that we created to the database that we created and back. So we're able to dynamically um, bring information from the database. Kenneth was able to bring that all the way to the front end and dynamically populate the site. Um, and then Jordan made an amazing express server and back end and created all the routes for everything so that everything was, um, as you can see, this is pulling directly from the database. Yeah. So and that's dynamically populated. So when you click on the link, it goes to Potter registration. Um, if I do that's, uh, paper crafting, it's paper, paper crafting, crafting registration. Um, it, these little simple things look very like commonplace, yeah. but in terms of uh, development as students, like it, I'm pretty happy with the result. Well, in a form like that, and building accessibility into it from the get go. Mm. That's this was all custom so, yeah. uh, client side validation. Yeah, so the best, I, I like the heart of this is the dynamic and programmatic way that uh, information is pulled from the back end to the front end and also is resubmitted. So the forms actually have um, client side validation that's completely accessible. Uh, so on click, if there's any errors, first off, it's accessible just with the no errors, but if there is an error, it injects um, into uh, the LI down there where it says error, student first name is required, error, last name is required. It injects um, in a non-technical way that, uh, to explain it. It just allows a screen reader to immediately read that field. Uh, it passes focus to that exact input. And then um, if you have a second error and click, uh, the focus appears on the field that has the error. So we really wanted to make it um, bulletproof and allow the person to get exactly where they need to be, hear exactly what the issue was, and get on with it. So uh, yeah, and so after they've completed that uh, on submit, it sends that information all the way to the database, and then instantly, Two emails are sent, one to the user confirming that the registration has been completed, and one goes to Heike for uh, making sure that she knows they're coming to class. Better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a backstory for the three of us uh, we are all currently students at Austin Coding Academy, um, and when we started this, we had just finished the halfway point. Uh, we hadn't touched the back end at all. And uh, so naturally, we were like, let's, let, let's do this thing. It, it sounded great. And we, we didn't really know exactly what we were getting into because it, it was just kind of this nebulous idea of like, yeah, it's an accessible website. We can totally do this. Um, and we figured out exactly what we were getting into. The, the funny part about doing this while we're in school is we were doing backend as we were having to code it on this website. So it was like, hey, you need to have a, a SQL server up uh, in like three days. We're going to learn about that next week in school. I mean, is this, are you going to do something different when you 
go to work or, or go to your studies? I mean, right away, is something going to be different for you? So, so, <laughs> so in terms of accessibility with that, yes, because concurrently in learning the curriculum to be able to develop this, yeah. we're also concurrently working with our mentor, who is amazing. He's a yeah. senior developer at AT&T and the head of like accessibility there. So, what's his name? His name John is Joe. Joe. It's oh, not Joe. Joe Burkhart. Joe, Joe Burkhart. Burkhart. Joe Burkhart. Yeah. yeah. He's the man. So, <laughs> he was able to give us very good feedback. I mean, this came together in three days. All the work that went into that took three and a half weeks. So, yeah, yeah. it's like every, these pieces from all over the place are slowly, slowly being developed and all of a sudden it's just like everything starts to come together. And in that time, we went through three iterations of testing and uh, cleaning up mm -hmm. the code. Yeah. Yeah. How often did you meet with your mentor? Once a week for an hour to an hour and a half on the uh, phone call. Yep. Great. And did you find that he was available like by email and stuff? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 Always available. <laughs> oh, that's Always so great to hear. 6 a.m. every morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? And, uh, and Joe, he was super great. available. Joe used to be a judge. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And that makes for a wonderful mentor. Because yeah. um, <laughs> they know and, how the judges are. And, and we talked about he really wanted to be a mentor. I'm the lead judge. Yeah. Um, and I, I always, anyone that wants to be a mentor, I prioritize because the helping the the developers directly, especially people that are new to this, yeah. is so important. So it really is exciting to hear this story. A yeah. piece of it's going to also be after we've had a week, we're going to... We'll be coming back to the site, but at that point, I think we'll actually be able to take a step back and kind of like allow this to sink in yeah. because it, it's just it's a lot to build a full stack site, traverse both directions, and make it all work and add accessibility. That was I'm I'm it happy we did it. Yeah, we did it. It's <laughs> <laughs> not for the faint of heart. <laughs> we had a lot of people tell us that it wasn't going to happen. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, they like they were like, when's this due? No. <laughs> and, and we told them they were like, yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> what are here, some, here it is. What are some things that, or some tips you would have for first timers next year? First timers that are developers or are student developers? What about student developers? Um, no frameworks before you attempt to do it. This is all in vanilla JavaScript, um, and. Definitely pay attention to the mentors. Like the the documentation is great, but when you're already confronted with a ton of documentation, it's very difficult to parse how everything fits in. Mm -hmm. So having Joe really assisted us to get to the heart of what needed to happen, uh, and you know after a pattern is established, you come to understand that pattern, and. I think by having a shortcut to understanding what that pattern is um, and why it exists, uh, you can implement it way faster and you can kind of keep it in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. What was the most valuable lesson you learned about digital inclusion and web accessibility throughout the program? Um, working with a screen reader, it shows you how challenging it can be to navigate the world. So you want to take a lot of care in making sure that everything lines up. I, I personally, um, you know, in, it sounds easy because we all know how to use the internet, uh, you, especially for something like a school. I just need to sign up for class. That's hard. <laughs> like creating a form that then you know, does a whole bunch of stuff to interact with the database and notify people and like save stuff in, in just a sea of interconnectivity below the surface. Like that's, that's just, there's so much in there that needed to be unpacked for me. Yes. Mm. One of the previous Presentation. uh, presentations included a dance. What uh, would you offer in response to that? <laughs> Oh Lord, you guys are, you guys are putting this on the spot. The uh, fact that our code dances for us. Yes. Yeah! yeah!
<laughs> yes, there it is. So when we used to do this as a one-day competition, we would have to go in and tell everybody, shut down, lights off. You we had a go checkered home, flag and everything. Go. We had a checkered flag, end of the day. And uh, then all of us staff and volunteers would sort of line the hallway. And as people left, we would do the theme from Rocky and we would applaud them. So I'm yeah. you all. Thank you. I mean it. Right? One, two, three. Joe, Joe Burkhart, Burkhart is the man. man. <laughs>